And Carol, we know people are worried. That there's research out that says 52%, so a majority of people saying, look, we're in stress, we're in mortgage stress. They anticipate a rate increase. They spend half of their income now to meet mortgage uh, repayments. 16% say they're struggling. They might not be in stress, but they're struggling. Um, you know, the, the PM speaks to his caucus. He says campaign on nothing else but the handouts I'm delivering on the 1st of July. But they're a drop of the ocean when you look at what might happen if rates increase in August. And this is where the punters are at, not, not in any other issue. I mean, it is literally survival. And it's, it's pretty bleak, isn't it, the consumer sentiment out there? And that's as people prepare to have these sorts of handouts that, you, that you're talking about here, the energy bill rebates that have been promised on a federal level and as well as in some states and territories, as well as those stage three tax cut changes. Despite all of that, people are feeling this deep pessimism, according to this latest survey, monthly survey that was put out by Westpac. And, of course, it comes after the Reserve Bank governor last week says that it would take a lot to go our way in order for more interest rate hikes uh, not to happen. So I think people are feeling pretty low about this and... You know, a, a few handouts is probably not going to make a lot of difference for many households. And that is the big dice the government's rolling in order to get, uh, they hope, a lift in the polls. AEMO puts a report out today that says the 25-year roadmap to net zero is looking pretty grim. It says we're facing blackouts unless we blanket regional Australia with renewables, unless we build 10,000 kilometres plus of uh, new transmission lines before coal exits the grid in 2035. Um, AEMO has costed the investment required, this is in transmission generation and storage, at $122 billion by 2050. Now, that's not everything in those numbers. If you look carefully, Cam, at the report they put out, there's a whole table at the back to say, here are all the things we need but that we haven't yet costed. So. 122 there a billion dollars is on the cheap mm. it makes nuclear look very viable in my world that's a lot of money isn't it peter and aemo has been pretty clear about this short-term threat as well it's been sounding the alarm bells for the best part of a week now about these gas shortages and the threat of running out of gas in winter due largely in it by its own assessment uh, due to the underperformance of renewables. We know the government has an 82% target for 2030. It's really relying on that to meet its emissions targets. At the moment, I just checked the grid, about 35% roughly is being provided into the system by renewables. That's in the East Coast market. So still a long way from where the government wants to be on that. And AEMO has been pretty clear in its assessment of where renewables and the rollout is at, that they're simply not currently providing the amount of generation that was required, that was expected, in these colder months. So as that demand goes up, the temperature goes down, people need more heating, there's essentially now this urgent call out for producers to pump as much gas as they can into the system simply to cover the gaps. Now, there's an issue with even getting additional supply in because projects have been subject to delays. There have been other issues as well, including with getting them approved. But there's a hope that this curry curry gas plant in the Hunter, when that comes online later in the year, that will help in New South Wales. But both parties know, Peter, the short-term requirement really is to open the floodgates and get gas into the market. We saw that in the government's plan it released as well, knowing both sides essentially acquiescing to the fact that gas is really the short-term solution to this.